Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. We have a lot of news to get to you today. In fact, here are, well, a, a brief little preview of the eight stories we got for you. Pretty cool. Uh, beyond all of that, please drop a like on this video. Any video that gets to a thousand likes within the first 24 hours that goes up here in the month of November, aka Prime Giving Month, uh, we will have a nice little giveaway uh, and give one of you, our commenters, a special prize on that video. Beyond all of that, in the spirit of the holiday season, we have a massive giveaway event happening on Thanksgiving. Uh, so to enter into this event, you do need to be subscribed to the channel. That's technically the only prerequisite to win anything on my channel is to be a subscriber. Uh, so please subscribe, of course, not just for that, but because you enjoy our content. Uh, but also this event is where we're going to give away a Switch OLED bundle and $100 to a charity of that winner's choice. But I am happy to announce we have decided to expand this giveaway uh, to give as much back to as many of you as we possibly can. I understand that we are still in the midst of a pandemic and there are still many people suffering. There's a lot of people that are going to have very little under their Christmas trees or uh, during their Hanukkah season or whatever holiday you celebrate. Maybe you're unfortunate that you don't get to celebrate any holidays. Uh, so I understand that this is just can be a really trying time. And sometimes the holidays are really times for cheer and other times it's times for sadness for others. And we would like to just take this opportunity to give back as much as we can. So I'm happy to say that we are not only obviously throwing some of our own money behind these giveaways to help out as many people as we can, uh, and obviously that, that money to charity. We are also going to be partnering with several different companies to try to bring you guys as many products as we can. Nothing is locked in at this moment that I can announce like, oh, what are some of the giveaways? But I can let you know there are going to be Switch accessories involved. There's going to be a lot of games involved, free games from indie all the way through AAA, uh, Nintendo games as well. It's going to be a really beautiful event. Uh, and yes, folks, I know some people don't like that we tend to you know, announce all these winners during live streams, but it is one of the easiest ways for us to manage something like this. I do promise we will have giveaways in the future or you do not need to attend any sort of live event. Uh, but I personally enjoy the real interactions between you guys and this channel. Now, our event actually happens on the 28th, which happens to be my sister's birthday. Uh, that is a Sunday, uh, and we do have it scheduled for 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Now, this will likely be a three-hour-ish stream, and we will be having giveaways all throughout the stream, with obviously the final giveaway being the big one. You do need to be there in person to win uh, so again i understand time zone wise this might not work for anyone most of these giveaways are open worldwide so i know again i hear all the feedback sometimes that you guys want me to have stuff that's not just done through live streams i have some plans for that for the holidays by the way where we'll have some live stream giveaways but also some you know other stuff in december but for right now this is a big event we're putting on yet again just like we did back during e3 uh, I really look forward to helping out as many people as we can. I know that I am in an extremely fortunate position here as a Nintendo YouTuber. That being said, let's get into the news. Good thing we have timestamps for people that want to skip all this, right? 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 Although you didn't skip it, did you? All right, our first story today deals with Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda was Switch, right? They brought a lot of games over to Switch. Uh, and one game in particular they brought over right away with Switch, in fact, it was in the initial advertising for Switch, was Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim's on everything, remember? There was even a joke about part of Skyrim being playable through Amazon Alexa. Yeah, again, Skyrim's on everything. That's the joke. Uh, well, Bethesda sort of told a lie. I don't think they intended it to be a lie, but it technically is a lie um, on Twitter. They announced, obviously, the Skyrim Anniversary Edition, uh, which, of course, there's always going to be some new edition of Skyrim coming. And they literally said, it's now available on all platforms. Of course, they really just meant PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox uh, One, Xbox Series, and PC. It's not available on Switch, and there's no current announcements to bring it to Switch. Now, why do we care about the Anniversary Edition? Well, it's basically the exact same package Switch already has. So when Switch got Skyrim, it included all the DLC and everything. So it's essentially the same thing, being repackaged again. There's no like visual updates or anything. However, they did do one thing that might be of interest to people, and they 
added a brand new fishing mechanic into the game. So you, know, you can fish in the game. Now they added a, a completely new way to do it, which I think is just them experimenting for the next Elder Scrolls game. And uh, yeah, you can't get this on Switch. There's not a, an ability to update the current game to it. And they are currently not offering you a way to buy this anniversary edition on Switch. Uh, it's very curious to see Bethesda not offer it, considering that Bethesda's already given us like Wolfenstein and Doom and Doom Eternal. Why the hell can't we get a game we already have on Switch with the new fishing mechanic? It's kind of sort of baffling to me. Uh, but yeah, Bethesda told a little lie. They are being called out on it by a lot of Nintendo fans that it have been enjoying Bethesda's offerings. And I'm not here to knock a good thing. Bethesda has been a big supporter of Switch. But come on, man. You can't say it's on all platforms, but ignore literally the market leading platform at the moment. Like, Switch is the market leader of all current platforms. Kind of a big omission, in my opinion. So Hori has went ahead and announced a new GripCon attachment for their Hori Split Pad Pros. Uh, this GripCon allows you to essentially take your Hori Split Pad Pros off of your Switch um, and use them as like a standard controller with your Switch, but through a wired connection. So not wireless, but wired. However, they give you a headphone jack and the ability con to control the volume of your Switch on, you know, directly on the GripCon. Uh, I do find this to be a really, really cool thing, uh, and they are charging $66 for it, uh, but that does include a set of, of, of the Split Pad Pros as well, so it's actually a pretty nice deal. The thing is that $66 is a USD conversion from Japan. That's right, this is only available uh, coming out this December in Japan. We can only hope that it succeeds there, so it ends up coming elsewhere, because the Hori Split Pad Pro is one of the most popular um, alternative Joy-Con options out there if you're not going to use a grip or something. Uh, and obviously they don't have drift issues, which you know really helps people uh, really want to get something like this. So the biggest knock with those things is they can't be used wirelessly, so they're only good to play in portable mode. But hey, now they're going to give you a way to play it in dot mode as well, even if it's not the most convenient ways, right? Wired connections are not always the greatest, but... Um, you know, or the most convenient, I guess. They're technically always better. You get less latency, but um, convenience-wise, it is what it is. It's nice to have it as an option. They do plan to sell the grip. Uh, it's the, the grip con on its own too. They mentioned on the Japanese website it will be available to purchase separately from the Split Pad Pros, but they don't list a price for it or when that will be possible. It looks like they're just trying to push the bundle, you know, for the holidays in Japan. So we'll have to wait and see. But hey, you know, Hori is one of the major, uh, you know, Switch accessories supporters out there so there you go so this one's not a good story um bandai hamco has announced that jump force you guys remember jump force it came out on switch and other platforms a little bit ago um it will no longer be available to purchase digitally on switch xbox playstation pc etc anywhere as of february 7th 2022 uh, they don't give a reason for why the digital version is being pulled it will still be available physically uh and most are kind of left to sort of sift through the history of Bandai Namco licensed games and have realized when this has happened in the past, it seems to be due to licensing agreements or an agreement coming to an end or the inability to re-agree to re-up licensing. Uh, this is a problem with licensed games, specifically around animated series, what like Jump Force is. It's, it's a bit of a shame. Um, now, obviously, it still being available physically means it's not like you can't get the game anymore. Um, but if you own like an Xbox Series S, you, you can't. So there's just, there, there's a lot of things that work, work behind the scenes on this. I'm obviously never happy to see a game get removed in any fashion. And Jump Force is by no means a bad game. Uh, so to see it just vanish because of what likely looks like licensing agreements, because it's from an animated show, uh, with Bandai Namco, by the way, that works with that animated show all the time. So uh, it's just, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, basically, if you want to get the game digitally, get it soon because it won't be here after this holiday season for the most part. All right, next up, we have um, a really cool f uh, sales update. So every Thursday, we get sales updates from Japan. Uh, and yeah, the Switch is leading the way again. Of course, Switch has been leading the way pretty much its entire generation. So. Um, you know, that's cool. But first, let's get into the top uh, 10 software. And then we have something to talk about with Switch hardware, uh, you know, later when we get to that sales data. So 
Um, new, uh, what was it? Mario Party Superstars actually still holds on to the number one spot. It's been sitting there since it was released. Uh, it moved 81,399 units. It's actually a 50% drop from last week. Uh, but it's, it's over 244,000 units now, uh, which is really nice. Uh, Call of Duty uh, Vanguard launched in Japan. And uh, yeah, it, it launched at number two. Uh, it moved 28,000 units for the PlayStation 4. Uh, the PlayStation 5 version of it, by the way, uh, sits at number 5, and that one moved, it uh, looks like, 12,000 units. So, um, you know, hey, some people are taking this as Call of Duty flopped. I would take it as Call of Duty Vanguard's not on Switch. If you really want to be successful in Japan, you might want to be on the only platform people seem to care about. Just, just saying. Um, as you can see with Nintendo Switch owning eight of the top 10 sales spots here. Uh, moving on to number three, uh, we do have uh, Dangaropa Decadence uh, plus Dangaropa S Ultimate Summer Camp uh, Trigger Happy Havoc Anniversary Edition slash Dangaropa 2 Goodbye uh, Despair Anniversary Edition slash Dangaropa V3 Killing Harmony Anniversary Edition slash Dangaropa S Ultimate Summer Camp. I, dude, that is one of the longest names I think I've ever seen. It's just a collection pack, okay? Just call it a collection pack. Um, anyways, that one's at number three, moving 20,938 units. That is new. Uh, at number four, we have Ring Fit Adventure, jumping up from number 17 last week. So a big jump for Ring Fit um, to 13,101 units. That one is almost at 2.9 million. It's got 2,896,000 in sales. So that thing's getting closer and closer to 3 million in Japan. At number five, uh, we already talked about that being Call of Duty for PlayStation 5. Uh, at number six, we have Fortnite Minty Legends Pack. Uh, that must be available physically because they only count physical sales in Japan. Uh, so that's 12,167, and that's new. That's uh, just released. Uh, at number seven, we have uh, Super Robot Wars 30 by Bandai Namco, uh, moving 12,079. Again, that's on Switch. Uh, and then we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at number nine. That one moving 10,569 units. That is almost at 4.5 million. It's at 4,489,000. And then at number 10, we have Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Order, uh, Water, Water uh, Switch version. Uh, at uh, how many units here? We got uh, 9,778 units. That one has now shifted over 30,000 units, which is a good uh, look for Fatal Frame. Now, what's interesting about the hardware is, yeah, Switch is at number one. It moved 90,517. Uh, PlayStation 5 moved uh, what looks like 10,120. Xbox Series moved 2,593, which, by the way, that's really good numbers for the Xbox Series. They actually have made progress in Japan, so kudos to Xbox. PlayStation 4, 7, 09, and the 3DS is still kind of petering along with 433 units. But here's the thing. Um, Nintendo Switch saw... Uh, a 16,000 unit increase over last week, but it's still down, uh, what is it, 50,000 over the same numbers last year. Now, last year, there were some bigger games out around this time, and I suspect Switch is about to blow up. Um, after all, we are about to get Shin Megami Tensei 5 and Pokemon this month. Uh, needless to say, I think Switch is going to be doing dandy. But what's interesting is when you look at the breakdown of the Switch unit sales, like which Switch is selling best. So the base model Nintendo Switch actually makes up 45,000 of those units, where the Switch Lite and the Nintendo Switch OLED are basically right around the same in the 20,000 range. Uh, I, I find this to be rather interesting for a number of reasons, but I guess the main one is we have discovered uh, through some additional information that's come out there that the reason Switch OLED sales are actually at the bottom, even behind the Switch Lite, is because it's sold out still. Uh, Nintendo, the demand for Switch OLED appears to have not gone anywhere. I feel like your production um, is not correct. Uh, you should be making less of the original Switch, more of the Switch OLED units. I think if you provided 40,000 Switch OLED units last week, you would have sold 40,000 Switch OLED units. And it's possible Switch OLED might even be more profitable for you, so you're almost leaving money on the table. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, uh, Switch OLED and the base Switch are kind of, in my opinion, conflicting systems because I know Nintendo tries to argue, oh yeah, we have three options on the marketplace. The so Switch OLED and the base Switch do the exact same thing. One just has a bigger screen and a better kickstand. And that's, you know, whatever, but it's also, look, it's literally the base switch, but better. It's a better version of the base switch. The base switch doesn't need to exist. It's going to continue to exist through this holiday season. I do think Nintendo's going to phase it out at some point next year, but still, 
Um, the Switch OLED needs to get better supplied, Nintendo. You need to focus more of your resources on that. And it can't argue chip shortage for it because guess what? It uses the same chip. So, so shift your production a little bit, Nintendo. I'm telling you, start making less of the base model, more of the OLED. Literally, do it worldwide. You'll, you'll, you'll see really good sales. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Even that $50 more, it's going to sell. So take advantage while you can. Or don't. I don't really care. It's not me that has to worry about it, right? I already have my Switch OLED. And one of you guys will be winning one too later. Uh, next up, we have an update for the Game Awards. So the Game Awards is really our next major event we're looking forward to. And yes, we will be live streaming that event, putting on a show for you guys, pre-show, post-show, covering their pre-pre-show because they do a pre-pre-show and then they have their pre-show, then they have their main show. We'll be covering all of it. It's usually a really, really long event, three, four, or five hours, plus our stuff on top. It's probably a whole day of streaming. Uh, you guys know what we did during E3. Kind of look forward to something like that, except having an actual better show than what the ESA put on. Uh, but here's some updates we have. According to Jeff Keighley, there's going to be 40 to 50 games featured in total with double digits of brand new announcements. And he means brand new announcements, like games that aren't currently announced. So there'll be at least 10 plus brand new games we haven't heard of yet shown off at the Game Awards. That's exciting. Um, and here's some direct quotes of, of what he told uh, PC Gamer. He said, it's great to have celebrities. It's great to have music. Uh, but I think focusing really on games is important, especially this year. There'll be a lot of content for 2022 and 2023 that will be sh uh, showing us our kind of biggest lineup yet of world premieres and announcements. What we really learned last year is at the end of the day, it's really the games and trailers that drive the show. At the same time, this year's show will apparently have more trailers for video game adjacent content like television shows or movies inspired by games. Think possibly seeing our first trailer for the Mario movie. Think obviously The Last of Us and other, you know, the the new season of The Witcher or something like that. So yeah, they're gonna have some, some showing of that stuff. It also just means that my streams are gonna be completely copyright claimed, but they pretty much get copyright claimed during the Game Awards anyway. So who am I to complain? Now, Jeff Keighley is partnering with us and a few other YouTubers, or a handful of other YouTubers to, to stream the Game Awards. So it's possible we might have a copyright free stream that we could use. Um, Jeff Keighley is usually pretty cool about that, but we'll see. It's hard to have copyright free versions of, um, you know, things like movie and, and, and trailers and things like that. Cause there's just so many companies that try to claim, uh, moving on. Keighley said he's looking to bring the show, uh, in the future into the metaverse. What the hell is that? Right. Um, and he says, we're thinking about what we can do in Fortnite creative. What can we do in core? So it's early days with that stuff. But I do think in five years, more people will watch our show or participate in our show from within a kind of real-time 3D environment than just watching a traditional video feed. So I think this is obviously where you're talking about VR uh, concerts and shows, where you're talking about obviously going inside a game and watching the show with other people as video game characters, like a social experiment. We've actually seen some of these like concerts in Fortnite. Uh, so I do think that's probably why he brings up Fortnite as an example. Uh, I do think that the audience for that is growing. Whether or not that outpaces people that just want to chill and watch on their phone, on their TV, uh, or whatever, or put the show on in the background, I, I don't know if it's ever going to outpace, you know, you know, watching it together with other popular live streamers. But we'll see. It is a growing market, and there's a lot of I think youth really interested in these kind of things, making an event with their online friends. So um, I think it's cool to expand it that way and not ignore that audience does ex exist. Also. Thank you, Jeff Keighley. He has put his foot in the ground over something that a lot of publishers are talking about. You guys might have heard of NFTs. We're not going to go over what they are and the blockchain and everything else and why a lot of these companies like EA and Ubisoft are leaning into it and hoping to take advantage of it because uh, that's just... Let's just wait and see what happens before we, before we can really talk about it. I, I feel like there's what it can be, what it has been, and then there's what companies are going to do with it. But here's what Jeff Keighley had to say. There is one new technology the Game Awards won't be chasing, however. Jeff Keighley emphatically states, we're not doing any NFT stuff. You could definitely tell Jeff Keighley is not a big fan of NFT. So, um, yeah, this is going to be an amazing show. Jeff Keighley's shows have been getting better and better every year. Not just the Game Awards, the Summer Games Fest this last year. It was better than E3. I mean, they got Devolver Digital and they put on one hell of a show. Like, dude, 
All, all Jeff Keighley needs to do is get Microsoft and Nintendo on board, and then EA, E3 doesn't matter in terms of press conferences. But uh, we'll see if that ever happens. Our next story is just kind of a small one, uh, but we, we're going to briefly talk about it because um, it affects all of us in a way here on YouTube. YouTube is going to be getting rid of public dislikes. They didn't put a date on when this is going to happen, but essentially you're all, you'll always be able to dislike videos but you're not going to be able to tell how many dislikes there are. The only people that will be able to tell are the content creators themselves. So as an example, I can still see how many dislikes are on a video, you know, say in 2022, but you won't be able to see. I think this is obviously an asinine change. In fact, I want to bring up something uh, that I, I didn't prepare for this, but I think is really important to talk about. And it's something that MKHB said on Twitter. Uh, Marcus Brownlee, I guess he's not called, he call, goes by MKHB anymore. That's what his YouTube channel used to be called. And he says, hey, YouTube, removing info from the rating system, in this case, dislikes, uh, is not helpful. Public, public like slash dislike ratio equals useful tool to see how helpful a video will be at a glance. Hiding dislikes helps nothing, but increase the number of people dissatisfied with spending too much time watching an unhelpful video. And this is where the thing is, the like to dislike ratio doesn't seem to affect viewership on like CNN videos that get massively disliked. Doesn't seem to affect you know viewership on like Nintendo Switches online. Expansion pack video is the most disliked video in Nintendo's YouTube uploaded history hasn't affected viewership, hasn't affected, you know, Nintendo Switch sales. So like these dislikes only really help on YouTube when it comes to tutorial videos. YouTube has a massive, like one of the big reasons that people even discover YouTube often is tutorials. So yeah, dislikes are a great way to tell if the tutorial is a waste of time or not. Cause you could have a 15, 20 minute tutorial and you won't realize till 10 minutes in that it's a garbage tutorial that doesn't help or doesn't do what you want it to uh now you're going to be stuck having to what either watch the video or try to sift through comments and see what commenters are saying and waste time in that way dislikes were a, a like dislike ratio was a quick way at a glance to do it now youtube claims they're getting rid of dislikes because there's a number of small creators uh that are getting dislike bombed and i don't deny that that probably does happen there's going to be whole groups of i guess hate groups out there that are dislike bombing you know small creators trying to bury them but honestly youtube all you need to do is give people the option to turn off likes and dislikes if there's a channel that's constantly getting dislike bombed guess what making it so it can't publicly be seen as dislike so it doesn't become a game or whatever um the content creator can still see those dislikes so they could still dislike bomb knowing they're affecting the mentality of the content creator just give the content creators the opportunity to turn off likes and dislikes like you can with comments. I can turn off comments, so just let us turn off likes and dislikes and leave it alone. Even Twitter is looking into adding dislikes, so you can even dislike replies now to tweets. You can't dislike the main tweet, but replies to it you can. Um, like Twitter is starting to add dislikes, realizing that there is some value added there. It feels like weird to like, cut a feature just because they're worried about content creators mentality. Here's also a reality check for a lot of people. Not everyone's made to make content on YouTube and YouTube needs to understand that as well. I know I get being inclusive, but hey, this YouTube game ain't for everyone. Let me tell you. So Game Explained did a live stream last night showing off uh, the GTA trilogy on Switch and well, it didn't look too hot. It had a lot of frame rate drops. That was the big complaint. Uh, was lots and lots of frame rate drops, but there are some complaints about the GTA trilogy in general. But there's a, a nice little article on this on, on Nintendo Life, and I'll kind of show you some some images of it here. Things like you know, oh my, looking at um, some of the read, uh, redone characters in the game and how different they look compared to the original characters. Um, a lot of focus on character models. Uh, you know, old Reese doesn't even look old anymore. It, it, it it's it, it's really interesting. Um, I, you know, even draw distance with the fog, people have an issue because the game doesn't look that great anyway. So the fog actually helps the game look a little better. Um, you know, it, there, there's just a lot of these examples of, of poor done of work in the game. It definitely feels like it was, it was I don't want to say rushed, but cobbled together a little bit. Um, I don't know. 
I mean, I'm not a big GTA guy, so I don't have a huge opinion on this one way or another. Uh, but if you guys do, let me know down in the comments because I know a lot of my fans were talking about, uh, or a lot of my viewers, I guess I should say, were talking about picking up the GTA trilogy. So if you are playing it, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on it. Um, I do know choppy frame rate is, is a common thing going around for the Switch version, which to me is a little shocking. I feel like it could have been optimized to get rid of some of that choppiness, but what do I know? I don't currently make video games, so. So our last story actually comes from Gimitsu, um, and it has to do with a company you might have heard of named Falcom. So let's get into what it says here. Falcom has published its financial results for the fiscal year ending September 2021, which reveals that the new Trails, not Tales, Trails uh, series is planned for release by September of 2022, and that the company plans to develop Switch titles in-house starting in 2022 which by the way they should have been doing it the whole time but hey better late than never here are the key bullet points from falcom's outlook for the fiscal year ending september 2022 2022 marks the 35th anniversary of falcom's flagship yiz series so the ys series other than a budget price version of yiz uh, was it yiz 9 monstrum Knox for the playstation 4 additional products are also planned starting in 2022 falcom will develop switch titles internally starting with the switch version of the legend of neyutu boundless trails in the fiscal year ending september 2022 falcom plans to release the latest entry in the trail series trails is one of falcom's flagship series with over 6 million copies sold worldwide and accolades from japan game awards famitsu awards playstation awards and more falcom will, will falcom will promote multi-platform game development across consoles pc and smartphones for japan north america europe and asia as well as actively utilize its intellectual properties to produce new titles that act as new challenges for the company including the trails in his series which are their two biggest ips uh so i'm just glad to see like look they, they've been they, we it's not like we haven't been getting falcon games on switch it's that they've been outsourcing them and when a company says we're going to start to in-house this stuff that usually means we're fully dedicated to bringing our games day and date on switch but hey i welcome falcon games supporting switch uh, i wish everyone would support switch the more games the merrier um so yeah that's that's pretty cool uh, that being said, that's all we got for you today. I know it was a little bit of an extra long video today, uh, but we had a lot of great stories to get through. You obviously got to skip through to the ones you care about most. Uh, I really appreciate it. Drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this type of video. If you don't like these longer, um, you know, eight story videos, let me know as well. I can do some, some you know, more short form ones, but... Uh, I, you know, I feel like with the timestamps and everything, you know, you really get to jump around to the stuff you care about most. I do appreciate those that do sit through the whole 25 plus minute show that we put on today, though, because uh, you guys are the mega fans and I really appreciate your guys' support. You guys really help that watch time. So uh, YouTube likes the watch time. So I guess I have to like it, too. Maybe. I mean, I watch videos all the way at the end all the time. Whatever. Anyways, I'm <laughs> the Rubble Jets. From Nintendo Prime, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today. Uh, and hey, we do have a podcast uh, tonight. It's not set up yet, but I'm going to get it set up here in a little bit. Uh, so hopefully I'll see a bunch of you guys at tonight's episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Catch you guys later. Peace out.